here. So just jump on board. So we're linked on Instagram already. Yes. We're linked on the app. And All right. Facebook is linking. All right. Perfect. And um, Michelle has um, her bow in. I'll Look teach you how to do that is. today. Okay. So tell them what the sew along is. Okay. You ready, Mom? Yep. I'm ready. Okay. Do you see? Do you see people linking on? I see Rosalie, Debbie, Deanna's here, Jenna, Millie, Kida, Barb, Shannon. Okay. All we're right. Perfect. On. All right. So today is day one of our two day sew along, doing our fun, easy stripe table runners that are super easy. So today I'm going to show you all the different steps for cutting and the different techniques we're going to do. Tomorrow, mom is going to be doing her sewing. Mom, and do you want to come over? Yeah. She always makes me come over. I get to, to man all the questions today for her. Yes. So I want to remind you, we're, um, whether you're on the main Facebook page, you're on Instagram, you're in our free app, or you're watching the replay, all the links are live. Yes. And um, we will show you the items she's using so you can buy um, anything that you want to mm -hmm. while you learn to sew this. All right. Also, the replay will be available for 30 days in our free app. Yes. And forever on Facebook. Woohoo! So, All right. So get okay. back to the computer. All now, right. if, you can't, if you can't hear mom, let me know because we have her right over here. Um, she can and talk I'll a little be, loud. I'll be um, talk, bringing up any of the questions. So if you have any questions, you can type them in while we're doing the technique demos to show yes. you all this fun cutting. Um, right now, if you are new, we have our pattern up, which is the first item. It's the pattern we're doing today, the Easy Stripe Table Runner. Um, but if you're new, type the word register to join or download our free app and you can sign up and then you can do all your fun shopping. Yes. If you ordered yesterday or the day before, we're going to be adding today's orders to your box. So, yes. Oh, you oh. can. Um, yeah. That's just my. So, um, anyways, um, Diana said she's so excited. Okay. Regina is in from Louisiana. Uh -huh. And Sandra said, "Good afternoon. Nice to see you both." And Barbara said, "You look. You two look bright and pretty." That's Michelle what coffee does. It wakes you up. <laughs> so, um, anyway. So we, um, if you're new, type the word register or download our free app. That way you can shop. We'll be adding to your boxes from Sunday, Monday. So kind of a special thing. If you do get charged additional shipping, we'll credit that back. But we are going to hold your boxes to get anything that you might want to add today. Maybe there's a kit or something fun that you see in the show that you want to yeah. get. Um, also, um, what if else? If it's your first time purchasing. If it's your first time purchasing. Type the word register. Oh, I already said that. Okay. Yeah, I already and said to register. Shipping. Oh, $9 shipping. If it's yeah. your first... Ten dollars should be now. I forgot. Ten dollars. Thanks to the post office for raising their fees. Sad, but um, and Deanna has sober dough in the oven. Sober dough in the and oven. Lori's yeah. Still on the road. She's watching on the road. Watching on the road. Good for you. Paula's in from New Mexico mm -hmm. and Tammy from North Dakota. All right, and let us know. Can you guys hear mom? Let us say yes or no if you can hear mom, because we're yes. in a different area. We're actually in our warehouse. Yep. So you might hear some taping on the other side because they're still packing some boxes from our Thursday Friday show. So if you hear a little bit of tape that's what that is but hopefully we'll be loud enough for you guys okay and penny said she received her box today with her ruler and her kits perfect and yay penny everybody said yes they can um here mom here, and we're up to 378 already wow so, that's exciting okay, okay so right. um it's a four-part program it's a four-part program so the first part is you're going to do a little um, show and tell. I'm going to do a little show and tell is the first part. Then you're going to go through the tools. Then we're going to go through the tools. <laughs> and then you're going to do the cutting. Then we'll do the cutting. So I'm going to show you um, on the back of the pattern. Erica, let me know if they can see this. There's four different ways that she shows you how to make this. Now, I've created... I've created two new ways to use her pattern to make it even special. Yay. So we're going to show you each technique on how to do that. Um, so show and tell us first, right, Mom? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Following all the rules here. So this is your basic Easy Stripe Table Runner. If you just do the basic layout, 
this is what it turns out to be. Now, depending on how big your border is, it's gonna range from eight to 12 inches, depending on the size of your border. But this is the traditional, straight, super easy to do and table runner. And what makes it basic? What? what makes it basic is we're just cutting six pieces. You're gonna have a strip here, a strip here, and then your two edges will have two triangles. So six basic pieces to make it the basic stripe. And do we have the little cake topper that um, to show them that you use the extra triangles with? It's in your office. Yeah, we can oh, go get okay. that. Okay. So. Okay, so that's the basic one. Uh -huh. Now, for those of you who want to get a little fancy, this is the second one I'm going to show you how to cut. Oh, now, I really love that one. Now, there's a couple ways that you can put this one together, which I will show you when we do the layout. Um, but this one, what you're doing, instead of a long strip, we're cutting a bunch of squares. Or not squares, triangles. <laughs> we're triangles. doing triangles. Yeah. So we're going to have a bunch of triangles to play around with your layout, and I'll show you the different ways to do that. Now, for a little bit more complicated one, and it's only complicated because of how you have to cut it and how you have to lay it out. Um, and I will show you this one. This is our strawberries one, which I think we still have a kit left for this one. We do, we do. And I'm going to show it in our cherry pie where I'll show you how we cut this. So that is the other one that we're going to be going Sandra through. Sandra said the second one is beautiful. It's well, gorgeous. Okay. This is yes. Utopia. And we do have, we do the have kit kits left that. in Utopia. Mm -hmm. And this one will be gorgeous no matter how you do it. It's really pretty. And then we have the new royal plumes that I'll be showing you how to do this one, which is made by the same designer. Okay. okay. And Lori said, do you need more yardage for the second style? No. All of these are made with the One kit. One kit will make all of these for you. Now, I'm going to show you in the end of the show um, my super long runner. So this is one that I kind of followed her rules and made the super long one. So this is made with one kit and we'll, I'll show you how I did this one. I kind of tweaked her rules a bit and I got the super long one. All out of a yard and a half. All out of a yard and a half. So this will be coming up too for all my wine lovers who got this kit. We'll show you how to do this one. And then I wanna show you guys an example of if you use the 12 and a half ruler all the way you can get some really fun, chunky runners out of those fabrics. Now, this was an older kit that some of you guys still might have that you're using for the sew along. Um, so we don't have any more of this, but we do have some other fun kits if you need those. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So do you want me to go through the rulers first? Yes, do the basic tools that you need to make Okay, this. so the first thing you need is the pattern, which is up, which is sold 100. 100 is the pattern. If you don't have it, we still have it in stock. And then which ruler are you doing? First? Now, the most common ruler you're going to want is the 12 inch ruler. Um, this is the one I use almost all the time because you can use all different shapes. We do have the 8 inch that will come up, which is a little bit smaller. So um, 101 was the big 101 one. 101 is my big guy. So if you're going to buy one ruler, I would buy this one because it gives you a lot of versatility um, to make the different sizes. Now, if you want the eight inch, this is the one that will make any of our smaller runners. This one is sold 102, 102. 102. Mm -hmm. So you can see any of these 16 wide rule or runners, your eight inch will be fine. So um, I've made a lot of them using this one, so you're welcome to just get this guy if you use those, but if you have any that have larger border prints, you're gonna want this one. And so one, this is 101, 102. 102. You also need a good cutter. You also need a good cutter. So this is the cutter that I'm going to be using today. This is the 60 millimeter cutter. Um, and we like this because of the angled um, holder. So like it's really um, ergonomical so that you can hold it nicely. Um, and I'll show you how to use this one when we do the cutting. So this is the 60. Now, if you want a smaller one, we do have the 45 in stock, which works equally as well. Yes. So this is the 45. So if you need the 45 cutter, um, again, it's the ergonomic rotary cutter, one of our favorites. So mom uses this a lot for her trimming um, when she's sewing. 
There. There okay. it goes. Okay. 104. 104. Okay, we got it. <laughs> so 104. Um, so this one is good, especially if you're doing trimming, anything small. Um, but the 60 and the 45, they both work great. And these are the last two that we need for two. Okay, the last thing that we recommend for this project are your Clover Wonder Clips. So this is a 10 pack. We also have a, I think it's a 50 pack coming up. Yes. Um, so the 10 pack is sold 105. Uh -huh. um, I use these to pin, not to pin, but to um, clip all my pieces together, especially when you're making ones like this, because your pieces are all going to be in different areas. So you want to make sure that they don't shift on you before you start sewing. Okay. So, and then if you want the larger pack, we have the 50 pack, which is... 106. 106. So that's 106. all you really need for this part of the project. That's all that you need for the first part of this project. Yes. And um, Judy said we just hit over 400. Woohoo! 414. Exciting, you guys. Yay. Ooh, pressure's on to show you guys all this, but it's fun. All right. So are we ready to go through how to cut these? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to start with our basic way of cutting. So we're gonna be cutting up the pumpkin farm table runner. So mom, you wanna scan this? Okay. So we'll put the kit up that I'm cutting in case you get excited about this one and you want to purchase it. So this is the pumpkin farm kit and it is a really cute one for the fall um, and it has a really fun border. So. I'm going to have Erica zoom us in and I'm going to show you this fabric up close and show you how I decide how I'm going to cut my fabric. All right, so this border print has its large piece here and then a small one. So I consider this a small print because some prints would have two different ones here. This one you can really get a whole bunch of repeats out. So I can get five traditional repeats out of this, which I like because you can do a lot of things with that one. So what I've decided on this one is I want my scarecrows to be on the outside and my little pumpkins and gourds to be in the middle. And I'm gonna match them up so that essentially it's gonna look like this with scarecrows on the other side. So all I do with this, you don't, because I'm going to make this the traditional way where it's just a stripe on one side and a stripe on the other side, I'm going to just cut down the side that I want and then go as far over as I want. You just have to make sure it's at least eight inches. So what I do, what'd you say, Mom? Oh, go ahead. Somebody said they're getting bad reception. Can you check on your phone to see how your phone reception is? We should be fine. Can you guys it. hear me okay? It says we're all at high speed. Okay. All right. Let okay. me know if you guys can hear um, before we keep going. And Adele is cutting a quilt as you go table runner while watching you from Yucca Valley. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> so. Okay. So, all right. I think we're good. I think yes. you guys can hear us okay. Oh, okay, getting lots of yeses. Fine. Okay. Cool. Okay. okay so. What I do is I make sure that my runner is gonna fit in my in my template. Now, a thing that you can do is this ruler is gonna show you what your, your runner is essentially gonna look like. So the tip is gonna have a half inch where this is gonna be in your seam, mm -hmm. and then you're just gonna go as far as you want. So I'm gonna want this gold to be in the quilt, but I don't want this part in my seam because I think it's going to be really pretty for the gold to blend and then I have the pumpkins here. Mm -hmm. So and sometimes what we do is we try to fold the fabric around to try to see how it looks. Right, right. right. You and I kind of discuss a little bit about what we would want, mm -hmm. right? So what you're trying to do is figure out whether you want this to show down the front or it all go gold. away. So I okay. want it to look like this where the line will go away and then it will be all gold here, which I think would be really cute. Yeah, because it's really hard to catch that line. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to cut it so that this is in the seam allowance. Correct. Now, yeah. and that's where you and I always have a discussion on that. We do, because right? yeah. sometimes mom likes it a different way than I do. Um, but, but normally we usually come up with mm -hmm. the same thing. Okay. And then also, just let us know if you guys can hear that tape in the background, because we can... We're shipping as you we're speak. We're shipping as we speak, so we'll try yeah. to 
be as loud as I can over here. Okay, so now the next question I say to myself is, do I want this little binding area in there? And I think what I'm gonna do is, I kind of measure, I'm like, okay, this is about eight and a half right to here, which is a good size runner. But I think it would be really cute to have that orange stripe on the outside. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my long ruler. So if you have a long ruler like this, this is what I use when I'm, I'm cutting my borders. Um, this is a 24 inch ruler. We just get these, um, these ones are from Creative Grids. You can get them anywhere if you don't have one. But I like the 24 because I can do a nice long cut. If you have a 12 inch ruler, that can work as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then what I do is I don't cut it exactly eight to 12 inches. I cut it on the line I want. So my it might be a little off by like an eighth of an inch, but at least my image will look the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to catch this first gold line in, but not the second one, because when I cut on the next line over here, I don't wanna cut into this too much and have, like if I was keeping this whole line, I'm cutting into my next image and I'm gonna lose a whole strip. So We have some new people on, so they wanna just know where are you and what are we doing. Oh, okay, so I'm Michelle and we are here in Frisco, Texas. We are doing our first day of our sew along for the Easy Stripe Table Runner. So this is our Easy Stripe Table Runner pattern. Um, so mom, do you wanna put it back on the pattern for those who are new? Um, sure. There you go. So we're doing our Easy Stripe Table Runner and I'm showing you all the different techniques on how to cut these guys out. Because I think the most difficult part is the cutting, which we're doing today. Yes. Tomorrow at two o'clock, mom is gonna be doing more techniques on sewing and we might have some more cutting if we run out of time today. Yes. Um, but we're gonna go through all these kits. We have some more fun kits to show you guys too. And I'm gonna teach you guys what I did to cut all these guys out. So, and, um, and Cheryl came in just from New, uh, North Carolina, and she said, thank you for the tutorial. All right, no problem. And Judy said, is your fabric still folded right now right now, or single? Do you have it single layer? Or right now, open? it's a single layer. So I have opened the whole piece up so that I can analyze the whole piece. If I fold it in half and I cut, the other side is going to be upside down, and I'm probably going to cut it wrong so, so we're always cutting on I always one cut on one side of this fabric on just one layer okay so we're gonna get to cutting so what I want to do is I want this first orange line to be in there so I'm gonna get my ruler we need a quarter inch seam on the edge so mom can sew this so yes. I'm yes cuz I we sew a quarter inch seam so what I'm gonna do is see how the ruler has a little dotted line here for the quarter inch I'm gonna match that up right to the edge of that gold orangey line. Now, if your fabric is wobbly, all I do is I kinda just pull the fabric so that it's nice and straight. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut all the way down. And then I'm gonna pull that fabric toward me. So you're cutting it so that this is where the binding will be. This is going to be where the binding is, yes. Mm -hmm. So again, what I'm doing is I'm matching my dotted line for that quarter inch all the way onto that gold. And then I kind of just adjust it with my hand to get it so that it's totally straight. And then we're going to whack that all off. And I'm going to go all the way down. So what this is giving me is that quarter inch seam that we're going to need for where the binding goes. And then I'm going to go up here because now the next step is to cut the top where the gold is going to come together. So what I'm going to do is I kind of play around like how much of this gold do I want to have gone. Now this little birdie, he's kind of a little close to my seam right here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in a little bit more and I am going to go right to that orange line. So now I'm still in the gold, but I give this little bird a little more head space because he's being a little tricky. So right now what I'm doing is I'm going to that second gold line, or orange line I should say, and I'm gonna cut right there. So mom can get that, this is the quarter inch seam for the other side. We're gonna cut this straight down and then we're gonna do the whole strip. Yep. So Helen asks, do you pre-wash the fabric? I say no. You could if you want. It's totally up to you. Um, we normally don't just because 
We're just gonna cut it, sew it, and then wash it once you need to wash it. Okay. But I would say no. What would you say, Mom? Um, I say it's up to them. Um, she also said, can you do close-ups? I can't tell how close you're getting okay. on this. All right, we'll zoom in for the next one because I'm gonna cut my next runner. Yes. Okay, so yes. now I've cut my first strip. So here's what my first little strip has looks like. So you can see I have the pumpkins on the top and the scarecrows on the bottom. So now I'm gonna cut an identical strip. So we'll try to get as close as we can to show you guys. And then let me know if I need to move over, Erica. Okay, so I wanna cut it exactly how I just cut that first one. So I'm gonna line up. I decided, remember on the first one, I want that orange, the first orange line to be in it. So I'm gonna put my little line here and we're gonna line that right up to that, that orange goldy line. And this is where it can get a little tricky because you'll see your fabric is shifting on you. So I'm just gonna pull this out to get it as straight as I can. Close up. Can you guys see the close up? Is that working for you guys? Let me know. Yeah, I think that's a good close up. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. And like the good thing is if you don't cut perfect, it's not the end of the world. You guys, it will always come out really cute. Yes. And um, Laura and Jeannie want to know how wide is your strip. Now, the strip varies right. according to your border print. So really, your strip is so. going to vary depending on what you want in it. So this one is going to probably be the smallest you want to go that I'm doing. So this one is an 8-inch strip. So I'm going a little tiny on this one, but that's because this was a smaller repeat. And I kind of like how this came out. Now I could have made it bigger. I could have put two rows of pumpkins and made it a larger one. It's all up to you. Um, I'll show you some larger cuts that we're gonna do next. Um, it just, to me, it, the fabric will speak to you and tell you what it wants to be. So okay. this one told me he wants to be little. And they said, yes, the close-up looks good. Okay. They said, is that strip identical? It looks like the scarecrows are different. They are a little different. So, but what I like about that is when we put it together, which I'll show you coming up, it's going to make it really cute together where they don't look identical. And I'm going to show you a trick I do when things are identical and you want to make it a little bit different. So they don't have to they be. They don't have to be. I prefer it when they're not identical. Okay, so we're gonna finish cutting this second strip out. So I'm gonna line it up to that first orange line. Now you can see I barely had any waist between, this is my waist, this little strip. So this one I cut really tight. Now sometimes you're gonna have a big cut and then you're gonna have pieces you're not using, which is totally fine. You really just need two strips out of all of this fabric. So the good thing about our kit is it gives you the flexibility if you want a wider runner like maybe I wanted it to have two scarecrows and make it nice and wide you could totally do that it's up to you you just kind of follow what the fabric is telling you all right so now I'm gonna go back to okay. this one and mm -hmm. uh, Janine says okay because she's using Avalon and hers will be wider if yes Avalon will be one you're gonna show um, I can oh, no. show. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we were gonna we Janine, can show we'll that one. Show, we're gonna show Avalon because Avalon is a good one to show the wide because it's a wide border. So I will we'll show Avalon coming up on how you do the wide ones. All right. So now I'm gonna cut the second side of this guy, and we're gonna line that orange line up to my quarter inch because you only need a quarter inch seam. You don't have to go any wider than that. Okay. Janine says super. Okay, perfect. Yeah, the wide borders are fun to do too because you can make them nice and big and you get all that pretty border in there, especially when the designers have a lot going on in their border prints. But most border prints are gonna be like this one where it's five little repeats and that's perfect for when we're trying to make this little guy. Okay, so you can see I'm not even using all of this right now. So you can almost get two runners out if you make the small. You can make a table topper with it, or I'm gonna show you a trick coming up where you can make this super long. So we're gonna put this to the side, and now this is where your runner kind of comes together. So what we're gonna do at this point, unless we have any questions on no, the cutting part? No, um, okay. Gail said she's doing the poppy border. 
Oh, Diane fun. Diane said we're up to 450 people. Woohoo! So, 465 now. 465? I mean, oh, my yep. goodness. Mm -hmm. That's so crazy, you guys. All right. So, this is the part where you're going to see. So, what I'm going to show you is this is now what my runner is going to look like. So I'm gonna put it together to kind of show you. So you wanna lay your pieces together and we're gonna start cutting the first triangle. Mm -hmm. So Elaine said the pattern is suggesting using spray starch. Um, do you use it? Uh, we don't use spray starch. You totally can, it's up to you. Um, I just have cut it and sometimes we'll iron the fabric out just to make sure like some of the folds are out. Sometimes we just put it together and sew it. I would say the cheaper the fabric, the more starch. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're getting good quality fabric in our kits. So you do, I don't think you'll need that much spray starch, but you're totally welcome to use it if that's a product you like to use. Yes. Um, okay, so. And Sandra said Michelle is so patient and easy going. Thanks, so. guys. <laughs> well, these are fun to make, so um, and they're not as hard as you think. It's just a little bit of cutting. I think the hardest part is deciding what part of the, the strip you want to cut. That's the hardest part for me, and then once you figure it out, it's super easy. Okay, so now this is the second step we're going to do. We've cut our two strips that are identical. Now, let's pretend that this print and this print are exactly the same. So, like, see how if I put it right here... My, my scarecrows are, would be matching up. So if your print is doing that, a trick to do it is just offset it a little bit. And then now your scarecrows are going every other one versus exactly the same. Okay, so show them that one more time. Okay. So they can so see that. So if, let's say hypothetically, your prints are exactly the same. See how this scarecrow and this scarecrow are the same. If your scarecrows were every single one, you can totally make it like that, but my trick that I like to do is I like to smooth them just a little bit. So now my scarecrows are all offset. You're going to lose about an inch of the border print. That will happen. But I think the final result is worth it mm -hmm. because it gives you a little more variety here in your print. And it doesn't look exactly the same. Yeah. It gives a little more movement. A little more eye. movement. Yes. Yeah. So that's a trick I do if it's identical. Now, luckily, this print is not identical. So you can see, like, my birds aren't matching up. Nothing is exactly the same. So because of that, I'm going to put my fabric right sides together. So as you can see, the pumpkins are all going to be together and the scarecrows are all the same. So you want to lay them exactly how they match together. So this is the top and this is the bottom of my print. So, so Sandra said she likes to offset too. Mm -hmm. And April says she spray starts um, prior to cutting. It keeps the fraying down and the seams come out exact. Yes. So there's mm -hmm. multiple benefits of using the spray starch. So again, totally up we to you. We usually are just making a quick one though. <laughs> we're just, yes, usually we're going fast. So we're just trying to get it into mom in the sewing room. Okay, so now this is where we need our little rulers. So I'm using the small ruler right now because I got a small print, but if you had the large ruler only, you can use the same one because it will show you, you want me to where to cut small that. Ruler up right um, sure, put the small ruler up. Now, the cool thing about this ruler is it has a flat top here. So you'll see this, that is needed so that when we sew, you have that quarter inch seam already ready for you. Okay, so with that top, what we're gonna do, we're gonna lay this on the corner. You wanna make sure, whoop, mom's <laughs> throwing things at me here. Yeah. You wanna make sure that your bottom corner is being caught in this ruler. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut our first triangle out. Now this you wanna make sure is flat here. And then as you can see, look at, mine is not perfectly together here on the bottom. That's because I went exactly with the fabric and sometimes fabric is printed a little wonky but we love our wonky borders so we're gonna go with those but this way when you cut it exactly with the border print it's gonna show all those images so I've lined up my top and then what I try to do there's lines all the way across this ruler every quarter inch so there's a white line and a black line so you can always try to make sure your border is straight can you zoom in on that so we'll show them the lines or can you move it up closer to the center? Let me see if I can move it up. Yeah. Did that mix mm -hmm. it up? Or no, you got it? No, that's better. Okay. I'll try to cut forward for you guys. So I've lined up my 
top here. So you wanna make sure the, top, the middle of your runner is here, the outside of your runner is here, and then we're gonna cut our first um, square. Now, if you're getting our little clipper or our little cutter, what's really cool is you can click this and it will keep your blade out. So then I don't have to worry about pushing down to keep it unlocked. And then when I'm done, I just click it and it goes back in. And Barbara said, are you a quarter inch from the end? So from the end of over here, this end? Yeah. So I went all the way to the edge. Okay. as far over as my ruler went so then that way it gives me the longest runner possible okay. i think every quarter inch you can get i would take it <laughs> and sandra says hello to the camera girl <laughs> <laughs> we have erica. That's, our erica. that's erica she's behind the camera okay so now see how it's cut these little triangles now these are going to be our end pieces so we're going to put those to the side and now we're gonna cut one more triangle. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip our ruler around and now we're gonna cut it the other way. Now we're not gonna be using this triangle that we're cutting out. This is just giving us the shape to put our end rulers on, but you can use these to make a table topper um, or any, you can make a second runner and use the pieces that you have. So don't throw away your triangles because there's lots of things you can do. All right, now I'm gonna make a funky cut because I'm cutting behind me. And Deanna says hi to Erica. Hello. And if the comments are getting in your way on the bottom half, you can swipe left or right. Okay. To see them or not. Okay, or I, I can try to push it up. As long as you keep her in kind of the, the middle, middle as opposed to the bottom. Okay, so essentially this is what we have just cut. So we've cut two triangles now you want to make sure you always cut this one with the bottom of your runner down. I've accidentally done it the opposite way and you mess it up because you need to have this ruler here, or I mean this triangle here, because what's going to happen is we're going to open our runner just like this. We eliminate the second cut and then this becomes your end. So we open these up. And Laura said, how long is your original strip? So your original strip is a yard and a half. The kit, her pattern calls for a yard and a half, um, which is what we made our kit. So it's a yard and a half for the length of that. So you're gonna be cutting the, the little triangles out of each side and then it will make it a little bit smaller. And then I think the finish size is, what did she say? 16 by 44 is her finish size. So that's what we do. But so see how we've come this, this together? That's the whole edge of the, the runner right there. So now all we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the other side the exact same way. So I'm gonna take my little triangles, put them to the side so I don't lose them. So cute. They're super cute. So we're gonna put this, flip this back the way it was. Now you wanna make sure you don't just open this up and cut your runners, um, your other triangles. You wanna keep this together. The reason we do that is if you just cut your triangles off the ends, if you happen to have a piece that just was a little bit off, your lengths won't be the same. So we wanna just keep these together. So I'm gonna push this all the way down over here. And now see how like this side was a little bit off? That's why we don't wanna just cut our triangles off each piece because we wanna make sure that our length for the whole runner is exactly the same. Otherwise, when we start sewing, when we do that final seam together, they might not match up perfectly. They'll still look cute, but this is our best way to guarantee it's super cute. So we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna do our first triangle. Make sure you get both edges into that corner. And Erica, you got me in here? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna have the tip here and then the bottom is gonna be on the edge. We're gonna get our cutter. We're gonna cut both of those triangle pieces. This will go in the scrap bin. This we're saving, cause that is the edge. And then we're gonna do our next one upside down. Mm -hmm. So Kathy said it makes, uh, really makes sense when you see someone do it. Yeah, it's really easy. It just seems complicated. When you, especially when you're just overwhelmed. Especially when you open up a fabric and you're like, where do I start? <laughs> So what we're gonna do is we are going to cut that second triangle. Now, again, we don't wanna throw this one away because what's cute about these little top, these extra pieces is you can make a cute little topper with this. So like, see here, these are all my extra pieces. 
you can make a little topper and then cut some more. And then look, you've got a cute little topper here for That's you. That's what I like, the extra pieces. Now, I'm going to show you guys how to make this one into a super long one. This is an idea I've been having, so I'm going to try to do it with this one. Um, but we'll do that near the end. Yes, Mom? And Lori said, will their purchases today go in their box from yesterday? Yes. Anything you purchase today, we will add it to your box. If you get charged additional shipping, we will credit that back to your account. So don't worry about that. But we, if we've, you're first time purchasing today, if you're first time, first time purchasing today, you'll get, um, it's $10 for shipping. And then if you spend $150, you get free shipping. So you can always go in our shop and see if there's anything else cute that you like. All right, now here's where the magic happens. What we're gonna do, you have four squares and you have your two big strips. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip my squares and I'm gonna put them where I think they might be the cutest. Cause like, see this one, this little scarecrow and this scarecrow are the same. So I'm gonna think I might move her onto this side and then we'll kind of put these guys away. So you just pick where you want and this is, all your cutting is now done except for your binding, but you'll do that later. And if you've done a binding on a quilt, it's the same kind of technique, but mom will show you some tricks on binding tomorrow. So see, this is, everything is put right here. Yep. Deb says it's easier when you tell us the tricks. Yes. <laughs> so, and see, that didn't take me very long and I'm explaining it to you. So imagine how fast it will be for you guys um, once you've cut your strips. So all you have to do at this point, we're gonna get it ready for sewing. So. Since I don't sew, mom does, what I do is I prep it for her. Yep. So I've picked where I want my little end scarecrows to go. I kind of made sure that they're not exactly the same. And then what you do is you're gonna sew this corner on and this corner on. You're gonna do the same here and here. And then we're gonna sew it together. So what I do for mom is I, I clip this. Angle it for me. Okay. Having fun with the camera. Out of the way. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to show all of this for you guys. So, what I'm going to do is these two edges I'm going to clip with my red clippy because I don't want to lose my orientation because you don't want to accidentally sew it together like this, which can definitely happen, especially in some of the more complicated ones. So, we're going to clip these together. And now this goes to mom in the sewing room. She's gonna sew these. Yep, so usually she's whacking these away and sending them to me. Okay. So what's nice about this is um, I already know the orientation and it's ready to do the sewing. So tomorrow I'm gonna show you some of the tricks on sewing this. Today we wanna make sure you th see all the different ways for cutting. Yeah. And what's also good is if you cut one day and sew another, you know it's going to stay oriented. Yep. So we fold this up like this in the studio. Mm -hmm. She makes me a little nice little folded packet. And now they're ready for the sewing room. All right. All right. So that's the basic one. That yes. is going to make your basic table runner. All right. You ready to go a little more complicated for our next one? So... Um, Viola said she wished she had you as her cutter. <laughs> <laughs> All um, right, so the next. And, um, Medina said, so are you using the first full cut or you've done two full cuts? I've done two full cuts. So and what do you have left? This is what I have left. I have three more strips that I can use left. Out of that Because one. I made it only an eight inch wide. Now, um, if you yeah. make it, the next one I'm doing is going to be a little bit wider, so you can't get five repeats, but this is going to be a good one to, and start, with. to start with. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and get over your fear of the triangle. Yes. So, so the next one I'm going to show you guys is one of my favorites. It's this, this version right here. Um, this, we're going to show it in the Royal Plumes. This is Utopia. We should put both of these ones up since I'm showing the sample too. Oh, okay, I just put Royal Plumes. Okay, up. so Royal Plumes is this new fabric we just got in, which is gorgeous. I'm gonna show you how to use this fabric and make it just like the Utopia one. And these, you can see they're both very similar because they're made by the same designer. So we're gonna show you this template right here. 
So if you buy you the Utopia, yeah, so she's going to put Utopia up too. So Royal Plumes is the one I'm going to cut. We'll put that one back up in a second. But if you like this one, this is Utopia. Here's your kit for Utopia. Um, now, you don't have to make it like this. Let's say you like it and you just want your flowers to go all the way down. You can totally do that. So, um, But this is Utopia. We just got this fabric back in stock. So some of you guys might have seen this before. Uh, it's absolutely pretty. But it I was love one purple. of our original ones. It was one of our original ones. Okay, so it looks more complicated than it is, but it is not complicated. And there's a couple ways that we can do this. So the first step is figuring out how to cut the border. Yes, Mother. Barbara Balmer said, who is the fabric designer? This is from Timeless Treasures. It's, I'm going to butcher the name, Chonga but it's Wong. Chonga Wong. Mm -hmm. Chonga Wong from Timeless Treasures. Um, we love their stuff. They always put a little metallic in it, which I like. Okay, so this print right here, we are going to figure out how we want to cut it. So, okay, like, I just switched it now to the one you're working okay, on. Okay, so she just put up the Royal Plumes kit, which is... This one right here, and, and you get the cute the little feathers for the binding. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm gonna do is I wanna make it just like this. So I want the flowers in the middle and this border print on the side. So what I'm gonna do is I kinda play around with my triangle ruler. Now I'm gonna use my large triangle ruler for this one because I know I'm gonna go beyond the eight inches. And I wanna get both of those little borders in it plus the flowers. Now I am gonna cut into the flowers, so I kinda wanna get as much of the flowers as I can so that it's really florally in the middle. You could go a little bit less if you just want a little bit of the florals, or let's say you love this floral print and you want that on your edges, you could make this the middle, which would be really pretty. But for purposes of this runner, to make it just like I did this one, we're gonna put this on the border. So I kind of like, I don't want to get this in the middle, so I have to kind of go down. And I'm thinking I like it at nine and a half inches. So this, luckily, this goes all the way to 12 and a half. So nine and a half is getting to my second border. So I'm going to cut these two strips so that I can get those flowers, okay? And you're, you're using the bigger ruler. This is the 12 inch. This is the 12 inch. So anything that has a little bit larger print, you want to go with that 12 inch. All right, so first we're gonna start by cutting off my little hem here, okay? So I wanna get both of those borders in. So I'm gonna go a quarter inch past that second little leafy border. So that this gives my mom a quarter inch for sewing. So I'm gonna use my long ruler just to cut it straight off at a quarter inch. And it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but the ruler helps you with that. So we're gonna cut that straight down. So have that one done. Now here, is, it's a little bit trickier if you're doing, I'm gonna switch this around on you, Erica, sorry. We're gonna go to the other side, just because I'm right-handed and I want you guys to see how I do this. So this is the part that can be a little bit trickier because I'm going beyond just following two lines. I'm cutting in the middle of a print. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Janet said, is this version in this Easy Stripe Table Runner pattern? Yes. yes. This pattern, what we're making right now is the second, the second one in the pattern, this one right here. So this is the option that we're making. She gives you four different options. So right now we're doing option number two. So it is in the pattern. Okay, so I decided I wanted to make this about nine and a half. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna find where my nine and a half is on here. So it's kind, let's see here. That's almost a six inch border. So see, this is where your math skills from high school come back into play. So I want it to be about nine and a half. So I'm cutting right here, which is gonna be about an inch off of this one, okay? So what I wanna do is cut it in, so an inch off of that, so that's five and a quarter. I know I'm making this more complicated for you guys than I need to, but, so we're gonna go right here, okay? So what I'm doing with my ruler, I have a six inch ruler here, so I'm gonna put that one inch right on that line, cause that's gonna get me my nine and a half right there. So um, you can put it on your board and just cut it the width, or um, maybe you wanted to go all the way, you can do that. So you just wanna make sure you line it up to these lines, so that you have a straight inch. So I'm going one inch 
over here and we're gonna cut this straight down. Now, the good thing is maybe you were shooting for nine and a half and you got nine, that's okay as long as it's all the same. So we're gonna cut, I'm matching my ruler to cut five inches into this border. So I'm doing a five inch cut from this line right here into this print, okay? So we're, yes, mother? So Deborah asked, are you using the anniversary edition of the pattern? And yes, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> so that's the most current edition of the pattern. Mm -hmm. All right, so you guys can see, I've just cut this whole strip. I have cut a little bit into the flowers and then I've cut into on the edge of that border. So now I have to cut one more. Mm -hmm. And Barbara said, do the kids have the backing or do we order the backing separate? Backing is not included in the kit. So each kit requires, so she says in her pattern, you need up to a yard and a half for backing. I have gotten between a half yard to a yard depending on how small your or how big your runner is. So for this runner, you're gonna need at least a yard for your backing. The one that I did before, if you just do the small one, you can actually get away with half yard fabric. I'll tell you um, what, after you cut it, we will show the backing okay. and let them vote on which backing would be best for me with to it. Finish. Okay, yeah. perfect. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to repeat this process. So since I just did this, I'm going to cut this one five inches from that line. So we're going to cut this one straight down. So we're going to cut my five inches into this print. And I just picked five inches randomly, so you can like play around and pick whatever size you want to do. That's the kind of fun thing about this. Um, and what's nice about this one, because it's a nice repeat, you can get a couple, you can probably even make two runners out of this um, because this border print went all the way to the end with a smaller repeat than some of our larger ones. So there's lots of fun stuff that you can do with this. Okay, I'm gonna put this piece to the side for right now because I think I can get it all out of two pieces. Now I'm gonna cut that edge off because I only need a quarter inch past this line so I can match my last little runner. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut a quarter inch here. So this gives mom that little extra quarter inch for sewing tomorrow. And can you make mine a little longer for tomorrow? For this one? Yeah. Um, yeah, let me cut an extra strip then and I can show okay. them how to do that. Yeah. So I'll cut another strip then. Okay, so I have two strips. Now mom wants hers a little bit longer. So we're showing you, we're going off the pattern. <laughs> so if you wanna make your runner longer, which you'll just need more squares. So I'm just gonna really fast cut this whole thing up. So we'll cut you four rows. So, oh, I didn't mean to throw you off that, that much. That's okay. okay. It's better to have more squares than less. Okay, okay so I'm just going to cut this really uh, fast. So we're doing exactly what I just did. I'm cutting a five-inch piece from that first line here. So that way Janet that... Janet said this demo is so helpful. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Well, they're kind of um, fun to cut out. It's kind of like a challenge. Like, how am I going to make this runner today? So I'm going to cut that. And Candace said, how much yardage did you start with? A yard and a half. That's all I started with. So your kit will come with a yard and a half of your border print. And then it's going to come with a half yard for your binding. And then you just need about a yard for your back. And then that way you can make your cute little runners. Okay, so I'm just quickly replicating that step. I'm going to make four identical strips because mom wants to play a little bit with this one. Yes. Okay, so I've cut the five inch and now all I have to do is flip this around and then trim that border where that edge is. Because I want it to be four identical strips. So I'm cutting it just a quarter inch past that line because I want that second blue line to show completely in the kit. So Vonda just asked, she's late to the party, is this recorded? It is recorded. So this will be up on our app for the next 30 days. Um, it will be on Facebook forever. And I think Instagram is just today, right, Mom? Yeah. So, but it will be on uh, our webpage. Should it be on just 30 days on our webpage too? 
Yes. Okay, so Facebook forever, and then on the app and our webpage, it will be up for the next 30 days. And Sandra wants your salvage. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I make my bows out of, you guys. That's a salvage bow. <laughs> Scrap bows. All right. Okay, so I've just quickly cut four strips for you. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay them on top of each other. Now, this technique for this one is we're just gonna be cutting everything up into triangle, or the little triangles. So we're not gonna have that long piece. So- Oh, could you make this the long piece here? Make this longer? I was gonna do that on the scarecrow one. Okay, okay. okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna do the small one for right now, Mom, and then I'll show them Wonderful. how to do the longer yeah. one when we show our Michelle's tweaks to the pattern. <laughs> this one's gonna turn out really pretty. Okay, so. so what I'm doing, again, is I'm putting them identically to each other, right sides together. So you wanna make sure that your bottoms are matching and your tops are matching. So we're putting them together here and then this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna chop up the whole thing. We're cutting the whole thing into little triangles. And Michelle, mm -hmm. Tammy says you make this look super easy. She can't wait to That's start That's because it is super easy. Um, and it's fun. It's really fun, it's super easy, and you get to play around with your border print to see what you wanna do. All right, so I have my strips cut, so now all I'm gonna do is start cutting those triangles. So. We're gonna start where it's facing me. So we have the tip to the middle of the runner and we have the wide side of the ruler to the bottom. I'm using that 12 inch ruler because I've gone past the eight and a half mark. So you need to use the larger ruler. So that's why if you're gonna get one ruler, we recommend the 12 because it's more versatile. So we're gonna make sure your tip is to the top. We're gonna go chop one side and now we're gonna chop the next. So I have one set of triangles. Now we're going to flip it around. Now make sure you got that point to the bottom now. And now we're gonna just cut the next one. And we're just gonna keep doing that. So my upside down triangles go here. And I'm just gonna keep adding to my piles. So we flip. And then we're gonna cut. I'm gonna add this to the pile. That's the right side. So you just gotta keep your piles together. And we're just gonna keep cutting this whole thing all the way down. And Janet said, are you using the large 60 degree ruler? Yes, now? I'm using the large one now because yes. if, you're, the width of the if the width of your strip is more than eight and a half inches, you gotta use the large one. So that goes in my bottom pile. And I'm gonna flip it. Now, sometimes where like the middle of your fabric was, they tend to fold under. So it is nice sometimes if you wanna iron your fabric out just so it doesn't do that. Or if you're like me, you just go with it. You just move it as it flips on you and you'll get it. And Janet Winter said, how wide was this strip that you made? So this one right now, um, I was shooting for nine and a half and it went to nine and three quarters. So it's a it ended up nine and three quarters, but as long as they're both the same, you're totally fine. So I ended up doing nine and three quarters on this one. Okay, so we're gonna- Because it's nine and three quarters wide. Well, it just depends on where you wanna cut it. Like I could have trimmed it a little bit in here, but I liked that floral a lot. I wanted to show more of that. So I kinda just went with it. All right, so that one decided not to cut all the way through. So I'm just gonna put my ruler back. Cut that little tip. Okay, you go in this pile. All right, so I'm gonna cut my last little guy here. Okay, so now I have eight triangles that are upside down and eight that are the right way. So we're gonna start with the ones that are the way that I wanted them. So this is where the magic happens. So we're gonna start flipping our triangles. And so see how that floral pattern got in the front there? So we're just gonna move those edges together. 
Now, there's two ways you can do this. One, you could do it where it's identical, which I'm gonna have to cut another strip up. And what that does is you're gonna put your pieces like this. So you're gonna make an inside circle and then you're gonna make the two edges. Now, I have to see how I need, I still need some more pieces. So I'm gonna cut another strip up. Or what you can do, which is kind of a fun one to do, is you can alternate the fronts and the back, which um, you can do just by moving these pieces. So if I wanted to do an alternate one, so I'll finish this one in a second. I just gotta cut one more strip. So we're gonna put these pieces here, but I'm gonna show you a fun little way that you can use an alternate technique. So let's say I wanted it to be more florally in the middle. If I use those backwards pieces, it's kind of like a puzzle. You put the puzzle together the way that you want it to go and you figure out your favorite way and then it all kind of comes together. So well, this, see, is, this is where we have a discussion and we have a little <laughs> vote. Too. Right. Right? And maybe I'm like, you know what? I think it's cuter with the flowers on the mm -hmm. outside mm -hmm. and the strip in the inside. So you kind of can play around with mm -hmm. it. So I'm gonna, I think I'll cut the other two strips up so we can yeah. play with it. Mm -hmm. So this is how we play with our fabric. So I'm gonna cut that second strip up that we did. Okay. So that we can see it all in one triangle Again. and okay. one in the way. And you actually can get two runners out of these. So let me just cut that really fast. Okay. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my piles together. I'm gonna grab those last two strips. Beautiful. This beautiful. fabric, it's like meant for this runner. It's so okay. pretty. All right, so I'm gonna do that chop again using my 12 inch ruler. So I'm gonna put those tops together and then the stripes on the bottom. We're gonna cut some more triangles out. And then the more triangles you have, the more you can play with your layout. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna go through here and we're gonna start chopping again. So I'm gonna chop this up real fast, make sure that my edges are matching. I'm gonna move this one up a little bit. All right, so we're gonna chop through here real fast. Little tail decided to stay on. Okay, so these go in my bottom. So part. Janet said, could you get two runners from a yard and a half? You could, yes, you definitely can. If you watch how you cut them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially like, so this one I was able to get four rows out of it. The scarecrow one, I can get five rows out of it. So it all depends on your border print, how and wide it is, and what you can do with it. So, okay, so we're gonna cut this one. Uh, Janet said this is amazing. <laughs> I'm glad Joanne, you guys like it. And Joanne asked how long were the strips? So they're a yard and a half. So it's the, the kits all come with a yard and a half. Now maybe you're you're not using a kit and you want it to be a little bit longer. You could use like a two yard piece of fabric um, if you have a border print. But her kit um, or her pattern calls for a yard and a half um, to make it the size that she has. So we went with that um, size, which I think is a cute little size. And um Jeannie says, when I get done with all the kits, I'll have a new table topper for every month. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I have a few more triangles to cut. And then we're going to get done with this fabric. So Judy said, do you cut your strip as wide as you want? Yes. As long as it's under the 12 inches of the ruler. Yes. you. I cut it as wide as the fabric is telling me he wants to be cut. So if he wants to be a 12 inch wide runner, like the Avalon fabric, he that's how wide he's gonna get. The scarecrow told me he only wanted to be a baby runner. So he he was an eight inch. <laughs> and you're gonna be showing the Avalon too. Yeah, we'll show the Avalon. All right, so I just got, I think that's the, I think I got one more to cut. Um, 
So Mary's worried about your left arm and whether you need a cut-proof sleeve on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being careful. <laughs> All right, so now this is playtime. Mom, I'm going to move these so just in case I need more room. Sure. Okay, so I'm done cutting. I can move my rulers. I'm going to play with my main prints that have the border on the outside, which is my initial way to do it. So, so how many strips did you cut out? I cut four strips up. So four strips, you probably could get away with three if you um, were putting it together. But this way I've cut all my strips up. I can make a table topper with any of the little extra fabrics or we can essentially make another runner. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put these pieces together. So start with your middle circle. You need six little triangles for your middle circle. And then what we do is after I put it together, we kind of play around with the layout. And I'll show you why once we start doing this. So this alone could be a table topper. This, so this alone could be a table topper right here. Yes. You got yourself a cute little table topper for your coffee table, for the center of your table. Now I'm going to put four triangles on each side. So. And Ermi said, are you going to be doing party line? You're going to talk through. I was, yeah, line. I'll show you how I did the party line one. Yes. Because that one's super cute. Okay. okay so so be worried, Michelle, when you point your pinky and cut, the camera angle makes it scary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll try to be better. <laughs> <laughs> it could just be me zooming in. I, I'll tell you this. I've cut for how many years here? Yeah, and I've never cut. cut myself no, you haven't. cutting. So. so, never cut myself. Okay, so here's our runner. So, see how I've laid this whole thing out? So, hopefully, Erica, oh, you can see beautiful. it. beautiful. So, cool. now, this is where I kind of play around. So, see how there's a couple that are matching here? And, like, these are matching. So, I'm just going to switch a couple of these. So, we're kind of playing a little game. To move the To move the colors. The colors. So, it's like, see how these are really similar? So I'm gonna move this one over here. Move this or one where you here. Want the highlights to be. Yeah. So you kind of play with it. I'm trying so to get all of it in there. <laughs> yeah. So we'll try our best. So, so this is what you can make with this. Now, there's a couple ways that she tells you you can do this. So one is like this, which is my favorite. Now another one in the pattern is her. It's her third option, which is this one right here. So do you see the third option right there? So all that is, it's the same one, except we're gonna make the circles on the edges. So we just turn these two pieces around and then these two. And now we have option number three. So see how it's made two circles on the outside and then two little triangles in the middle. I but I kind of like, like the, the last one, one better. Yeah. Which one do you guys like better? Do you guys like the circles on the outside or the last one? Option one. Option one or option two. So here's back to option one. Okay. I kind of like option one better. That's one of my favorites. Now, another way you can do this, maybe you want to mix it up. So I like this as my center, but look how cute it would be if I take these off and I put those upside down triangles into my edges. So now I'm taking those other pieces. Oh, you're getting a lot of votes for one. One. Some are just saying it's fun to play. It is fun and to some play. for two. Okay, so I'm gonna just put these over. So here's another way that you can play with your runner and you can actually get two out of this one because we had four long strips. Mm -hmm. Look about that. What do you guys think about this one? So see, the difference is we have our main board like stripe here and then the stripe in the middle and then the flowers are around the edges. So this is another way you can do it. So it's all- What option is that one? This is option three. Not in her, I don't think this one's in her. This is in her pattern, but she doesn't have it flipped. So this is kind of a Michelle flip. Um, so here's option three. What do you guys think of option three? So what I like about this is it kind of makes it a little bit longer here to your eye because you see the lines going here and then it really pops all those florals. So this one is another way that I like to do it. Um, now, another way that you can do this, which is gonna be fun to make your, long, your runners longer, 
is that first way that we did it, I'll show you with this. If you have a print like this and you wanna make your runner super long, cut four pieces like this and you're gonna put one edge on each side and then one circle in the middle and then your other two pieces here. And now you have a really long runner, which is what we're gonna do with this one, I think, Mom. Okay. We'll play around with that. Okay. That's another way that you can play around with it. So there's so many options for you to do with this one. So which one did they vote for, Mom? One, uh, two, or three? Option one seems to win. One? Okay. So, so we're going to go with kinda one. kind of like option three, two. Three is cute. So. Okay, so we're going to go back to one since that's the one I want to show you guys. Now, see all these pieces I have? You could make another runner out of this or some yes. little uh, trivets, table toppers, whatever you guys want to do. Okay, so now that we've cut it and we've decided our layout, I'm going to go ahead and put all these pieces down. And now it is sewing prep time. And do you want to show them the backs? Um, sure. That before we pin them all together? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, so. so we have a couple backs for this one. So if you're making this runner and you like it, this one is the floral metallic. Oh, it needs to be um, scanned. There. Okay. Okay. So this is the back that I think would be super cute for this one. You need a yard if you're making this one at least to a yard and a half. Um, this is from Royal Plumes. It's her floral metallic, but this would be gorgeous for the back. So if you're new, you're going to do sold, what is it? 110. Uh -huh. You want to do it twice. So do sold 10, send that comment out and do sold 10 and we'll cut this as a yard for you. But this is what I think would be super cute as the back. We also have another one from her line that is super cute. This one is the more like clustered flowers. So if you like this one, this is also super cute. But look at how cute that would be on the back of your runner. So get a yard if you want that. Now, if you're going to use your extra pieces to make like trivets or things, you're going to want more than a yard. You're going to want to at least get a yard and a half, I think. Mm -hmm. So, because you'll have those. And I think this is the one I'll use for my back. That one? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we are at the point to get ready for sewing. Now, it is just the same as how we did the first thing. So, and no Y seams. No Y seams. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start separating these. So I have my front up here and my back. Well, not my front, it's my sides. So I have my two sides, right? So what we're gonna do, do you want me to put green stickers on them so you know the yeah. numbers? Mm -hmm. Okay, can you give me the dots up there? Yeah. So in the studio here, we love our green stickers. So I'm going to put some stickers here. So I'm going to put numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. With an arrow up, so the orientation. You want arrows? Yeah. She wants arrows. She's mm -hmm. getting arrows. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start here. I have one, two. Now, you don't have to do this, but we love our little dots. We actually sell, I think we still sell these, Mom, right? The handy dots? Um, we probably do, yes. Six and seven. Okay, so I have all my numbers here. So I'm going to put one and two together, and we're going to clip those. I'm putting the little red clippies up. Okay, and then we're going to be putting three, four, and five together. So three is going to get clipped to four, and five is going to get clipped to four. So I have three, four, and five, and then six and seven are gonna get clipped together. And Vicki says, whatever mom wants. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna put these on top of each other so she knows that this is all side one. Uh -huh, and we're going left to right. We're going left to right. So I'm clipping those together. So now this is gonna be ready for tomorrow when she does her sewing. And now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, but we'll start at eight so that she doesn't mix, ma mix them up. So we'll do, well, I guess it'll be okay because they're flipped. No. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, eight, nine, 10, 11, 14. 14, we'll put our little arrows for her. And we love these little dots because they stick on the fabric, but we can remove them <laughs> easily. So nine. We got 10, 11, 
12. Can this be made reversible, Judy said? Yes, you could probably make it reversible for sure. Okay, so I'm gonna clip eight and nine together. I'm gonna do 10 to 11. Now, the only reason I'm doing this to be extra safe is just to make it easier when it comes to sewing. So there's no thinking tomorrow when mom has to sew these pieces together. And Janet said she needs Michelle to come to my house, do my cutting and clipping. <laughs> so, this is why the 50 pack of the Wonder Clips comes in handy. I know, I, so, I think I only have a couple left. So All right, so mom now I'm putting- know if we can buy the dots. Um, we can. see if they have them. We, um, we just have to pull a sample, but there, we yeah. should have some made, I think. Yeah, let me go. Um, well, let me ask Molly. Yeah. All right, so that's it for that one. We'll show you how to sew that one tomorrow. But that was that. So let me know. Well, mom just left. I was going to say if there's any questions since she's monitoring the screen. Now, see, look. Look at all these pieces I have left. I can make a whole second runner out of all of these. So don't throw your pieces away because I have all these little squares left. So you could get two runners out of this. I could make placemats out of these. I could make trivets. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So I have all these triangles left. So don't throw these away because you can get a lot out of your kit um, to play around with. And those are fun for the table toppers. Oh, yeah. The little round table toppers. Okay, so let me know if you have any more questions on that style. Um, and then we're gonna show you the, cause we're going till four, right mom? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna show you what I think is the trickiest one, but it's not that tricky. It just feels tricky to me. <laughs> yeah, and we started at two. Okay, so. so were there any questions, Mom, on that runner before we move on? No, they just said it's a great way to keep organized. Okay, so now you're going to do this one? Yes. Okay, so, so you have two more styles, this one and the yes, super Erica? long. Um, Barbara says that she was confused and thought it started 10 minutes ago. You can always watch the replay um, after... After yes. you're done to catch up. <laughs> yeah, so this video will be on Facebook forever. And then it's going, so you can also re-watch it as soon as we're done on Facebook. It will be on the app probably an hour or so after we're finished. Yes. Uh -huh. um, and then it's going to be on the app and our web page for about 30 days. That's how long they keep those videos up. Yeah. Okay, so now we are on to option number four. This is option number four right here which I, it's like a twister one. Now he's a little bit more tricky for me because you have to be, you have to use a print that is identical. So I'll show you what I did. This is in my strawberries. So you can see how it kind of twists through it. So it has to be an identical print or at least a line. If it has a line, it has to be in the center exactly. Otherwise, and I found this out because I've cut them wrong, they, the lines don't match up. So the perfect one to do the twister with, and I don't know if that's really what it's called, but I call it the twister. Um, the perfect to do the twister is the cherry pie because the cherry pie has the florals with the cherries on either side of the line with the cherries. And so, it's not too wide. And it's not too wide. So I'm gonna show you guys how to cut this one um, and do a really cute twister with your cherry pie. So, let me get the fabric out. Now, the kit is up for the cherry pie. So this is the kit, and it has the really cute red for your binding. So if you wanna get the cherry pie, we still have a few of these left, right? Mm -hmm. We also still have a few of the strawberry one, which is the one I just showed. Mom, do you wanna put the strawberry up? Sure. It might be too wrinkled. There. Yeah. Okay, I have two left of the strawberry. So if you like this one that I just put up, we have two left of the strawberry. Um, so it's gonna be the same technique if you wanna make it the twister. So that one is sold 113 and then 112 was the cherry pie. Yeah. Okay, so we're, any more, any questions before we start cutting? Did you wanna show that? Oh yeah. We might need to up the counts on that. We did, she did. Oh, she did? Yeah. Okay, now if you want my handy dots, 
These are a must have in the Pink Sand Beach Studio. I use these on all of our kits when we're cutting the stuff. If you want things to show direction, it comes with five sheets and I think each one has 32, so you get a good amount of these and you can reuse them a few times. So, yeah. But these are our handy dots. We love them. They're bright green so you can make sure that they you see them. You see them. And they help when you're doing anything that is directional. So if you want a pack of handy dots to be cool like us, we have them for sale. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna do cherry pie. So, okay, so I've already cut some of my squares because I wanted to make sure that I had this right before we started going. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna open up this one. Now, the cherry pie- I'll Send the kit back over. I'll put that one up because okay. we filled out of the other one. Okay. So the cherry pie one is up. Okay, so you can see I've already cut two strips. So I'm gonna cut the other two strips right now um, because I, I wanted, to, this one what you have to do is you just have to figure out what your center line is gonna be. So my center line are these cherries and I want that to be in the middle of my runner. So if I'm, you're gonna kinda play around with it. So what I kinda do to start is I look at these blue lines because I know I've measured with my straight ruler and I see, okay, this blue section is just shy of three inches. And then I check to make sure this is exactly the same. It's the same. So I'm happy with that. And then I measure this middle section, which is gonna be my line. So that's almost two and a half. So again, this is where your high school math comes back to haunt you if you don't remember it. So, but we make it easy because all you have to do is just make sure they're both identical. So since this one is an identical print, what I'm gonna do is I want both of those blue lines in. So I'm gonna cut a quarter inch to this one and a quarter inch over this one. That way when mom sews it, it's just gonna be blue. So I'm gonna get that, the gingham will only be in that middle, okay? And Michelle, I left the handy dots up because so many people are getting them. Okay, let me put so that up right now. So right now what's up is our handy dots. So if you need a fun little notion that we love here in the studio, that's up right now. And what number is it, mom? Sold 114. Sold 114, sold 114. Sold 114. Okay, so. I'm gonna cut the two strips out of this and then we're gonna cut up um, our triangles. So, and then play with the twister. Then we're gonna play with the twister. Okay, so, and if you don't wanna do the twister, you can do the one we just did too because you're cutting the same type of way with the triangles. So I'm gonna start on this end and we're gonna work my way over. Now you'll notice here, I'm gonna cut into the salvage because this is exactly the width I need. So I'm gonna cut right on that blue line. So there'll be a little bit of that salvage in, but that's gonna all be caught in the seam. So mom won't even show it when she's sewing up her bindings. So we're gonna trim all the way down. So we'll have a little bit of the white line, but it will be hidden when we sew. But that way I can utilize all of this fabric and I could probably get a couple table toppers as well as my runner, or I can make my runner longer if I want. Yes. So Jeannie said, um, Michelle is such a good teacher. <laughs> Thank and, you. <laughs> um, Betty said, joining late, will I be able to watch the whole thing later? Yes, this will be up on Facebook immediately once we're done. Um, and it forever. Will, it, and forever on Facebook. The app, it will be up about an hour or so once we're done. It takes a little bit of time to download. And then um, you have 30 days, you can watch it on the app or our webpage, but it will be up on Facebook forever, so. And if you're new to us. And if you're new to us, you just type the word register or download our free app. That's the best way to shop. Um, and then um, anything you purchase today, it's $10 for shipping. And if you get to $150, you get free shipping. So if you put some stuff in and you check out our web, sh our web store, you can see more products that we have in there to add to your box. Why don't you tell them when we go live? Um, oh, we normally go live four times a week. So we do two boxes a week. We do a Thursday, Friday box and a Sunday, Monday box. Anything you guys buy today, if you bought Sunday or Monday, we're going to combine it with those boxes to help save on shipping for you guys. And we do our shows Thursday night, 5 p.m. Central, Friday at 3 p.m. Central. Mom goes um, live on Sundays in her jammies at 7 p.m. And then back with me on Monday at 3 p.m. Central here in Frisco, Texas. 
All right, so we are gonna go back. I'm gonna flip my fabric around since I'm right-handed and we're gonna cut the quarter inch seam on the other side. So I have my quarter inch seam here and now we're gonna cut a quarter inch seam here. So now this will be an identical piece on both sides of that strip. Now I've done it before where I had it like this, where my strip was up and it won't work for the twister. It will work for the one we just did, but it, the twister, the line has to be right down the middle. So we are gonna make sure that that happens. So we're cutting a quarter inch here. And we're still hanging in at 450 people. Woohoo! I hope you guys wow. are enjoying it. This is our first time doing a sew along, so if you guys like it, we're gonna try to. Well, this do... is the cut along. This part. is the cut along. Today's the cut along. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have my first strip. Now I'm gonna cut my second one. Okay, so we're gonna cut. And the whole trick is to have that center one down exactly. It has to be. I. It has to be exactly down the middle. So luckily, my print is identical, so it's a lot easier to cut. Now, let's say this was a different print. You just have to make sure that that strip is exactly down the middle. So I'm cutting my quarter inches off the edges so that mom has some sewing room. Oh, and then look how cute this bow will be, mom. I'll use this strip to make your bow. Oh, that's I'll, a good I know one. you guys want to learn how to make my bows. So some people want us to consider Zoom classes. You both do an excellent job explaining things. Look at how cute this would be um, as a bow. Michelle wants us to do this more. <laughs> Diana said this is the best tutorial. And um, Deanna says this is awesome. It was so what she needed. Oh, good. And Joanne says she likes a cut and sew along. Perfect. Well, yeah. sometimes the cutting is the tricky part, and you just need a, a little helper to show you that it's not that hard. <laughs> yes. And Rosalie said this is great. She was nervous to make the table runner. Now she thinks she can do it. You can do it. <laughs> and Mary said our demonstrations are better than the printed direction. Good. I'm glad that we could help. <laughs> so. Okay. So now what I'm doing is I am going to put these on top of each other. So now you can see this one, the cherries are going in both directions. So that makes it a little bit easier because it's not a directional print. So, but if it was, you just want to lay one on top of the other. And now we're going to cut all my triangles out. So Barbara said, would you guys consider the same concept, a cut day and sew day for your purse patterns? Which we have our little... Yes, we could definitely with. do that. And Joanne just loves your bow, Michelle. Thank you. all And April says, great job, ladies. I can now understand the direction. Seeing is believing. Yes. All right. So, so we're going to cut, and I have my pinky all the way over here for you guys. <laughs> so we're just going to cut all those triangles. And the great thing, because this is identical, is every triangle is going to be the same, whether I cut it up or down. So we're going to cut that gonna just keep going down this strip and make this easier okay so now after we cut all of these then we're gonna start working on our twister layout So a few more triangles to cut out. Remember, make sure that that is flat with your fabric where that tip is, because that's going to help when it gets time to be sewing. And make sure all of your seam allowances have enough stretch. Because if you go over too far and you make it a point, it makes it a little bit trickier and your triangles are going to be a little wonky. So you want to make sure you have that extra little point. And Judy said she does appreciate these explanations. Oh, good. That they help um, um, augment the patterns. So. Well, and we have such cute kits with all the border prints, so well, we want to make sure. can see why we got so excited about Yeah, we got really prints. excited because it really highlights those border prints. I'm going to switch over to the kit that has the cherries. Okay. So... Um, okay, so the cherry kit is up right now, and we only have eight of those left. Okay, so see, this one I can't get another one, so this goes in my 
scrap pile, and now it's time to play, play with our triangles. Okay, so the twister, what you want to do is you kind of follow their layout. So the thing about this one is you're going to be flipping some of your triangles around. So instead of making it a circle like we did in the middle of it, we're going to start on our edge. Okay, so we'll start here. Try to start on the edge since we're going to so be building. So Leanne said, are you going to show how to cut the gnomes where there are two different rows in the repeat? Um, and we'll show you guys how to do a border print with two different repeats. So we'll be mm -hmm. doing that. Yes. And Gail said, do you have other kits not included in the tutorial today? Yes. And we'll show those. We'll show those. Okay, so I have my first four here that were making the edge. So, and this was the one, it took me a second to figure out how to lay it out. Because normally I wouldn't put this one like this when we're going here. But you actually are going to put this one like this. So see how I'm doing this? And then... This one goes here. So see how I have two strips coming together? And now because that line was straight down the middle, instead of it being like this, it's going like this. And when we sew it, it's going to make that straight line. And that's kind of how we create the twister. So then this is going to go here. And I kind of should turn this <laughs> going off the table. Okay, hang on. Let me move this a little bit. So this one, it's a little more funky with the layout, but it turns out super cute. And it's all triangles. Okay, so now again, you're gonna feel like you wanna do this, but you're gonna be folding this one here because we're gonna be making a new twister starting here, okay? So, and you can follow the layout. She has the layout. So this one's gonna be straight, and then this one, we're gonna turn it so now, it connects it to this one. So see how I'm making my little twisters here? And because I have extra fabric, since this is a smaller repeat, I can make this as long as I want. Her pattern stops it right here, but we could keep going. Oh, so we could do a super twister. We could do a super twister. So if you want to do a super twister, it's these four right here, you're gonna add another section. So normally you'd end it, I'll show them the normal one, mom, and then I'll show them how they can okay. make it a super. So see there, and it's right there, you have it. So see how we did this? So it's similar to the normal one. This is where it's different. This piece right here is twisted, and this piece right here is twisted. So see that? So see if I do it this way, it's like the one we just did. Do you guys see that here? Diana says, wow, that's a great layout. It's really, what I, I love this one because those cherries really pop. It shows you the layout. So it shows you how easy it is to make it, but because this one, to do the twister, this border print has to be in the middle. Cause see how now I'm twisting it and it makes it connect. If it wasn't in the middle, it wouldn't connect. And I only know that because I've cut it like that before on accident. <laughs> all right, now if you wanted to make it a super twister and keep going, because I do have all these extra pieces, you would just keep adding another middle row. So I'm gonna move this over. And now I'm going to add another middle row. Just like this. One. And then this is my twisted one. That's my twisted piece. And so see, I can keep it going. And I probably could have added one more if I wanted. So now see how I made it longer? And it's still that one kit. This is all from one kit. And I still have one, two, two, four. I have six more pieces. So I could either make a cute little table topper with this, um, or I could make my table topper longer. Okay? So you have good options. You have lots of options. So the, again, the trick with this one is your, your stripe has to be in the middle. So you could have two different patterns here. It's just when they match up, it's you're going to see that. So you kind of want the same pattern top and bottom and then a middle stripe right down the middle. Now, I was playing if you did um, two and a half inch strips mm -hmm. and you did like little stripes and then cut it would be kind of fun. Oh, yeah. But you have to make your strips there too. So that's an idea I've been thinking about with using your jelly rolls because if you put some jelly rolls and you sew your strips together you can make some really fun twisty ones with those so diana says amazing 
Okay, any more questions on now this guy? we're going to do your super long. Okay, so first we need to clip this together for mom. So again, we're just going to separate. You want to keep it long like this, mom, or do you want the smaller size? Um, whatever you want me to sew. Why don't we keep it long because we have the smaller strawberries. Okay. Okay, so now it's prep time for sewing. So we're going to keep our pieces together, and we're going to put these all together here. So... We're gonna go ahead. Um, I'm running out of clippies, Mom. So okay. I'm just gonna. Um, Molly will go. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, that's fine. I'll just put these together. So we're gonna put pieces one, two, and three together. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Because we're making a longer one. So I'm gonna clip these together. Clip these together. And Deborah said, can we watch this video later? Yes, we can. And then I'm putting these all on top. So now this all this whole stack is ready. One, two, nine for mom to sew. So I have the one side here. And then we're going to put one, two, and three together. And then um, four and five, six and seven, eight and nine. And then we're going to put these all on top of each other. Okay, perfect. So now I have my two stacks ready for mom for tomorrow because we're going to be doing the sewing portion tomorrow. So she'll so show you how easy it is to sew these together. Okay, so that's it for the super twister. So any more questions on the twister? No, but they love seeing your different bows. <laughs> okay, now you're going to do your my, long one, right? My long one. Okay. So, and what were the other ones they wanted comments on? Um, this one the, and the gnomes. Okay, and the gnomes. You'll yeah. go through how to cut those. Okay, okay, so we've done all of her patterns. So those are all of the ones she shows you. Now, I've kind of tweaked some of hers and made my own sizes. So um, this is my super long one. This is made with one kit, one and a half yards of fabric using... The, um, the wine fabric that we have. And I'm gonna show you how I did this one um, so that you can make a super long one if you want using one kit. Now, you'll have enough binding in your kit. You just will need more fabric than normal for the back because you have almost a two yard runner. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so let me get my fabric. Now, this is a larger print. So, let me get my wine fabric. Um, so, Deborah just joined and just wanted you to show the rulers again. Okay. So, we'll put up the rulers. Um, the first one will be the 12 inch if you just want to hold it up. Okay, so here's the 12 inch ruler. Now, if you're going to buy only one ruler, this is the ruler I recommend because you can do anything from an 8 inch to a 12 inch wide um, border print. So this is the most versatile ruler and you'll get your most money out of this one. And that's sold 101. 101 for the 12 inch. And, oh wait, no, that that was the eight inch. Sorry. Oh, she's tricking you guys. <laughs> Sorry, Mom's brother. tricking you. That, 101 she put, was the eight. Sorry. Okay, let me put the eight inch. So she's tricking you. This yeah. is the eight inch that she has up. So yeah. sold 101 is the eight inch, which yeah. works for any of those smaller border prints, like the cherries I just did. You can use the small one. Um, anything that has five small repeats, this is the one you can use. Okay, and 102 is the 12 inch. 102 is the 12 inch. So if you accidentally put the eight inch in your cart and you want the 12 inch, just take it out and you can do sold 102 and put that 12 inch ruler in. We should probably put the pattern up too. Okay. For people jumping on. Now, if you need the pattern, it was sold 100, right mom? Yes. Uh -huh. Sold 100 for the pattern because they're not included in the kits. That way you can buy as many kits as you want. And we'll do the kits in your last 10 minutes. So okay, you got perfect. 10 more minutes. I got 10 more minutes. Okay, perfect. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do my super long runner. The, the party one. <laughs> the party one. And you can do this with any of the runners. Um, I just happened to try it out on the wine one because I, and then mom was like, I think you cut this wrong. And I said, nope, I just made it special. <laughs> Okay, so this runner, you can see it has 
the wine, the big wine bottles and then the little wine glasses. So the way that I cut it for this guy is I wanted the corks on the edge, the wine glasses, and then the bottles in the middle, okay? So we're gonna start by cutting up my strips and to make the long one, you have to cut three strips because you're gonna have two long strips and one for triangles. Mm -hmm. So Helen says, yay, this is her kit. Woohoo! <laughs> All and right. I put the kit up too. Okay, perfect. So she it's puts the kit up. 15. Okay, so we're gonna start cutting this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it right on, let's see how, it, I think I'm gonna cut it right over that line. We're gonna make this one a little wider. So we're gonna cut a quarter inch over that red line. So my quarter inch line is right at the red. So I'm gonna get all that sky in the behind those wine bottles when I cut this one. So we're gonna cut this and then look how cute you have for a bow. A cork bow. Cork bow for your happy hour party. <laughs> and you're cutting a one thickness of fabric. You're one, th I've opened the whole piece of fabric and I'm not full, I'm not cutting two layers, just one layer. That way you know that you're not gonna make a mistake on the back side. Okay, so we are cutting it right here. Okay. Now I'm gonna cut the next part of it. So I want, the whole cork in it, but I don't necessarily need this because our binding on this kit is burgundy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it a quarter inch past those corks. So I think that's how I did it. I might have actually gone out the whole way. So I'm actually gonna cut it because see how I'm going now into the next one? So if I cut it exactly how I just cut it, then I can make two exact things. So I'm gonna actually do the exact same cut I just did. Yeah. So, Kathy said you could make a seasonal bed runner this way. You could. You definitely could, mm -hmm. which would be fun. And um, Deborah said uh, you could add the weights to a tea towel. You could. That would be a good idea. Uh huh. And um, Janet said you could trim out a kitchen towel with the drip you, with the part you were cutting out or the strip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, this one, I'm actually using the entire piece in between, so there's no waste. So I'm just going to be cutting that same cut. So I'm going to the edge of the corks over here. I'm matching my quarter inch on my ruler to the bottom of that burgundy line under the corks. And then I am just chopping right there. So we're going to cut three rows. Cause see, this is a wider print, so I can only get three rows out of this because if I cut another row, there's no corks here. So I'm only limited to three rows. So you'll see that happen on some of these larger border prints where you can't get four or five rows just because this print is so large. But they have their benefits because you can make them really cool and wide, which the little guys, you can't necessarily do. So Francis said, this demo is great. Love how you keep it moving to cover all the versions. Perfect. So. All right, so now we're gonna show our last cut. And again, um, the replay will be on Facebook forever. Mm -hmm. And it'll be on our app for 30 days. And then part two will be tomorrow at 2 p.m. Central mm -hmm. Time so that you don't miss out. Okay, now see, this one I couldn't use because there's no corks here, but I could make little pot holders out of this. I can make a trivet. I wonder if you could sew the corks on if you had to. Well, yeah. I think you could just make, there's, there's yeah. a ton of stuff. You could even cut this into little triangles and make little toppers out of it. I would do that. You know, because you don't have the corks. Yep. But I wanted the corks because it makes it a little more fun. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two of my pieces. So only two, not three. So this is how you make the long one because I have a yard and a half piece right here. So I'm gonna match up my, my um, right sides together. So see the corks and the cups are at the bottom, the wines, well, my bottom, your top. And we're gonna put the wines on the wines. We're gonna match that all the way up. Connie says mug rugs with the extra. Deborah, Deborah said table toppers. Mm -hmm. It's so cute fabric. You don't want to 
You waste it. Anything. Yeah, there's lots of stuff yeah. you could do. Okay, so I am matching that top line up so it's exactly on top of each other. Now here's the trick, okay? Now normally, her pattern tells you to cut a triangle here. We flip this and we cut here. But I'm not gonna do that because if I lose that length. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my ruler all the, I'm upside down, moving it all the way to the end here, okay? Um, because now, actually, it's right here. Because this is gonna be, so I'm moving this all the way to the end so that the tip of my ruler is hitting the end on the side closest to me because this will be the, court, the edge of my ruler. So does that make sense? Do you guys all see that? And Denise um, is on, and she says, what's the name line of the wine fabric? This one? After five. After five. Oh. After five is this one. Yeah. Okay, so do you guys all see that? So normally you're going to cut a triangle and then a triangle. But I'm moving my ruler upside down, and I'm pushing it all the way here, and I'm going to cut. I want you to zoom in to okay. see what you're doing. So, so Michelle says, will tomorrow's tutorial automatically come up? on the app or do I need to sign up? Um, it's you don't have, to, it will automatically come up. up. Yeah, you yeah. don't need to sign up for an event. But you might want a notification. Right. So um, they sh if they want to make sure live notifications are, go to Facebook okay. and type the word live. Okay, perfect. So, um, so we'll do. Christy said, uh -huh. if you start cutting from the opposite end, can you avoid cutting upside down and to towards you? So you're going to have to cut upside down because the ruler has to flip. But normally I would cut it sideways, but I'm trying to cut this way so you see the fabric. So you're not normally... Normally, you would move around. normally I would move to cut the correct way. Um, but I'm trying to do it so that you guys see me cutting versus my arm covering it. So, okay. Our, uh -huh. it remind them if they're on the take app of coffee while you're to hop over to Facebook and type live on Facebook. Yeah, if you're on the app, go to Facebook and type the word live. That on way tomorrow tutorial. it will notify, you'll we'll be linked you up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, to do the, the trick to doing the large one, we've lined up our two fabrics. Normally, if we're making the normal runner, which you can do, you're going to cut your triangle here. We're going to flip and cut your second triangle here. Instead, we're moving our ruler all the way to the end, and I'm going to cut this right here, okay? So I'm essentially just cutting a half triangle. To I'm going to the do smallest amount of weight. So I have just this little piece that's going to go away, okay? Now I'm going to go all the way to the other end. We're gonna do the exact same thing, okay? So I'm gonna have my ruler upside down, pushed all the way to the edge. Make sure, and the nice thing about these lines is you can make sure your stripes are all straight too, which is nice. So now we're gonna cut this here and pull that. So now, see what I've done? I've made it extra wide just because I haven't cut those extra triangles out. Extra long. Mm -hmm. Extra long, sorry, extra long, okay? So that's how you get the length. Now I'm missing four little triangles here. So I'm gonna put this to the side and I'm gonna get that last strip that I did, okay? And I need to cut four triangles out of this piece right here, okay? That so, have the corks on the outside. That have the corks on the outside, okay? So what I do here is I'm gonna just cut those triangles. So see how I have the corks on the outside. I'm gonna get my ruler. Mm -hmm. So Mary on the app says, where do you type live on Facebook? So uh, Mary, you wanna go to this actual video on Facebook and type the word live in a comment to this video. Then you'll be linked up for notifications or actually any of our live selling videos. Right, any of our videos. So I have one, so. I have two. And Diane, um, you wanna type live, L-I-V-E, not love. I know you love. <laughs> <laughs> so here's number three. So see how I can get four triangles out? 
So we got three. And then this is our fourth one. So then now, so okay. this is Michelle's secret way to make your runner super yep. long. So and this is our 10 minute. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna pull my pieces back out. I'm gonna open them up. And I'm gonna sew this one tomorrow. No, too. this is this is Deanna's. Oh, okay, we're not sorry. sewing this one. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna put my ooh, my coffee. So see how long it is? It's already as long as my table. <laughs> so. so we put our edges on, and now I have my super long runner. Yep. And see, there wasn't anything different I did except for the initial cut. You're still going to make it the same way with your six pieces, your big strip, and your four corners. And then that's it. So then we'll put the edges together. We'll clip these so that when it's time to sew, you have your two edges. Everybody saying hooray. Woohoo! See, and you're using the same kit. You get a double, it's almost like a foot or so, it's almost two feet longer, I think, yes. right? Uh -huh. Especially for these wider prints because the it's thing about the wider see. prints is the wider your print goes, the shorter your runner will be. That's just because if you follow her, instructions. You follow her instructions because you're using a bigger triangle and it's going to cut away from your main runner. So that's why you'll see the wider ones seem to be a little bit smaller. So then these two get sewn together, these will get sewn together, and then these get sewn together. And that's it. And when, you, when you're all done, it will be this big. <laughs> so see? So that's how you make it using the same kit. They're very impressed that you figured that all out. Yes. So, okay. <laughs> so, Michelle, you have 10 minutes to show them kits. Okay. And make comments on the cutting of a couple of the other okay. sample ones. And then if we get anything that we need extra cutting, we can do that tomorrow before you sell. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. And if you have any questions, let us know right now while we're showing off some of this stuff. Okay. So, did you have the wine kit up, Mom? Um, let me, yes, the wine kit okay, was so up. Okay, so right now the wine kit is up. So if you liked this one, and again, you don't have to make it super long. This was, I, we just made ours super long. Yeah. Um, this one is sold 115 for this kit. And it's measuring, um, six feet. It's, well, right. I'm five, seven and it's touching the ground. Oh yeah. So five it's and a half. Just under five and a half under, feet. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have this really fun print for the back. Do you have that, Mom? Yes, they should be together. Oh, here it is. Okay. So if you need, now this one, because it is so long, um, if you don't want to piece it, you're going to need two yards of fabric if you don't want to piece it. If you don't mind piecing it, I think a yard and a half will be enough. So, we'll just put that so one here's back. the after five toss bottles. This is the one that we use. This is a half yard increment, sold 116. Uh -huh. 116. So again, if you don't like piecing, which totally fine, you'll need two yards if you're making the extra large. Um, otherwise, you need a yard to a yard and a half, depending on what size you're going to make it. Increments um, of a half yard. Increments of a half yard. And then we will cut it um, continuous for you. Now we have another option for the back, which is super cute, which is our wine labels. So this is our wine labels. So if you want this cute one, this would be super cute on the back of your quilt. This one is sold 117 okay. for a half yard. So Great. you can put continuous yardage, just count, just put in the number of half yards you want. And then we will cut that continuously for you. And then they're asking about the interfacing. Okay. So this is the fusible fleece. One so we increment. use fusible fleece. So this is a one yard um, increment. increment. We will cut it continuous for you. So if you need three yards, we'll cut you a three yard piece. So just put the number that you want and we'll cut it all together for you. So a comment for each a yard. A comment for each yard. So this one is sold 118 for our fusible fleece one yard pack. Um, and we use the fusible fleece because it's just easier to sew with and your fabric doesn't move when you wash it, which is what we like. Um, I'll probably give you the scanner okay. and you can just show a kit and scan. Okay. So, 
All right, do we want to do the ones that we showed earlier or just no, the new ones? Let's move on. Okay. So. All right, we have a brand new one that over. just came in, which is called, and it just slipped out of my hands, which is Happier by the Hour. So if you want another cute cocktail one, this is called Happier by the Hour. We just showed this last, um, yes. yesterday, the last night's show. Um, this one is sold 118. 19. 119. Let me open it up so you guys can see how cute this print is. And the fusible is um, 40 wide. It's a one yard cut. One yard cut is the fusible. Uh -huh. And Super Georgia, cute. we have not made a reversible one. So. Yeah, ours we've just put the, the yardage on the back. All the right, back. and then we have some cute backs. Just bring the bin over and scan it. Um, your backs are right here. Okay, so if you are getting the cute new Happier by the Hour, we have the cute pink glasses, which and, is yeah, sold, sold 120. 120. And Nancy asked, did we quilt the runner? Yes, and we're gonna show that tomorrow. Yes, mom will show you how to quilt the runner yourself. Um, or you can always send it out to a long armor, or if you have a long arm, you can definitely quilt it that way too. And then the other background we have for Happier by the Hour is the Aqua Cups which is super cute. So if you wanted to make a really cute, happier by the hour cocktail with those fun pool drinks, this one is sold 121 for a half yard cut. Remember, you're gonna need a one yard to one and a half. She calls for a one and a half. I think you can get away with a yard. If you're gonna do the super long one, you need a yard and a half to two yards. But um, if you're also gonna use it for the backs of your little toppers and stuff, you're gonna maybe want a little extra. Okay, so. The next one that we have up. Do you want to just take the whole band over? Okay. okay. All right. So going with our Utopia that we did, we have a couple other by the same designer. This one is called Gilded Roses. Let me know if it came up. 122. So this is Gilded Roses. So if you liked that Utopia one I did in the blues. I'll get that. I got some. Okay. All so right. if you liked this one. We have, this is from the same designer. It's called Gilded Roses, perfect for Christmas, spring, Valentine's Day, fall. And then you get the really cute green leaves as your binding. So that one is sold one twenty two. And then here is the really cute back, which is sold one twenty three. So if you want a really cute back for your runner, Sold 123 half yard cuts. So just comment um, the number of half yard you want. Do sold 123, send that comment, and then do it again. Sold 123, and we'll cut you a yard, yard and a half. Just make sure the number of half yard increments you want is in your cart. So Judy said, is there a back for Utopia? Um, yes, for Utopia, it's actually right here. So if you got Utopia and you want the back for Utopia, this is the little florals with the butterflies sold um what number is it mom 124 yeah and uh mary jane has a question somehow okay. i missed it um mary, mary jane. jane mary jane um if you could retype your question we'll be happy to answer it yeah so 124 is the utopia there's also another utopia um which is the turquoise splatter which is really fun this is sold 125 from Utopia. So if you want a really fun, bright pop of color on your back, sold 125. And Joy said, will you show how to do a four repeat one, the gnome? Yeah, let's can we'll, we'll do, do that gnome. tomorrow. Okay, we'll do that first thing tomorrow. We'll I'll do the four that. repeat. Okay. And they wanted a back on Christmas legends too. I think we have the backs for all of them. Okay. All right, so another new kit that we have in is called Opulent Floral. So One, this is the kit. 126. 126. This is what my bow is made out of. Super so cute bow. It's a really cute bow. So this one is similar to our Utopia. If you like more pinks, reds, yellows, um, this one is sold 126. Uh-huh. 126 for the kit. 
And Mary Jane was wondering, how do you make the regular one out of the wine? That would be just exactly how you did the scarecrows. Right? Exactly how I did the scarecrows. Mary yes, Jane. you could do it just like that. And you would just cut your two triangles off either end. And then it will make it the normal size. All right. And now if you need a back for this one... I don't have a sticker, so we'll have to find the sticker. I think that one was stuck to a bag, I remember. I'll find the sticker for this guy. I think it was stuck on the back of one of the kids. Here it is. Okay. Opulent Sprigs. Oh, did it come up? Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, if you need the back to this one, this one is super cute. This one is sold 127 for a half yard cut, so just make sure you comment the number of half yard. But look at how cute that goes with those florals. So pretty. Sold 127. And Judy said, are there any Christmas kits? We do have Christmas. So I have one more here and then we'll do Christmas next. So this one is the Sunrise Garden, which I think we only have a few left of this one. Yeah. So Sunrise Garden, you get the Paisley is your binding. And then look at this print. I only have a few left of this one. That one's wonderful. This would be gorgeous for spring. So for my purple and butterfly lovers, this is sold 128. 128. Uh -huh. 128. And then let me get my Christmas bin. All right, for my Christmas lovers. Okay, first up is Snow Place Like Home. No place like home. Cute little snowman. Yeah, let me show you that print. I have it right here. But this would be so cute for Christmas. And that is sold 129. Mm -hmm. 129. And it comes with the cute little red binding. So I'll show you um, some of our other Christmas ones. So we also have the really cute Winter Joy. So Winter Joy is this one right here. So more of that vintage Christmas look. Mm -hmm. Sold 130. Mm -hmm. Sold 130. Now this is a fun one because it has three different borders in it. So you can do a lot of stuff with this one because there's three different images going on in here. So this could or be a really fun one. Or get two different table runners out of yeah. it. Yeah. So this is a fun one that you can work with. So this one is sold 130. 130. Now, if you need a back for Winter Joy, we have the sleds, which is sold 131. Yeah. So 131, if you want a cute back for your Winter Joy sleds, 131. Yep, 131. All right, so now the Timber Gnomes, which is the one that we'll show tomorrow, this one is sold 132 Two. Uh -huh. and I'll show you this. So this one, I'll show you guys how to cut this one tomorrow in the beginning before we do the sewing. Cause this one has that double border again. And so it's Tammy a little bit said, wider. Do you have a backing option for sunrise? For sunrise. Let me take a look. I think we didn't have one in the bin for it, so uh, I'll have to we take have a to look. Just search on checkout. Well, yeah, well, if you search Sunrise on on checkout, you guys can see what one we have there. Um, and then Timber Gnomes, I think for that one, the back was. Let's see, oh here, I think it was this one. Yeah, this was the back for Timber Gnomies. Was this cute snowflakes, which really could go on the back of any of the Christmas, Christmas ones. Yes. So this is from Timber Nomi's, but this could go on the back of any of our Christmas kits. Sold 133. So cute. Okay. And then if you are more of a blue snowman friend, this is Flurry Friends, which I've made this one up. Um, Flurry Friends is sold 134. 134 and let me show you that one because I have that one made but look how cute the flurry friends turned out we haven't finished the back but we've sewn up the strips that so one cute. turned out really cute really cute so that's flurry friends and for the back I have two options for the back I have 
my snowmen on blue and then snowmen on navy. So this one is sold 135. Okay, and Ermi said, did she miss the party line cutting? We'll show that we're, we'll show, I'll show you how I cut party that Party line one. and gnomes will be tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, we kind of ran out of time. So we'll, we'll show those first thing tomorrow for you guys. And then we have snowmen on the navy. So these are backs for flurry friends. Let me finish this. Timber Gnome is. All right. Winter Garden. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. Winter Garden is the next Christmas, which is super pretty. And Karen said, what time tomorrow? So same time tomorrow, 2 p.m. Central. 2 p.m. Central. All right. So here's Winter Garden. Sold 137. 137. And your binding is this really cute little pine cone or holly berries in the pine leaves. And then here's your back for Winter Garden, which is sold 138. Let me open that up because it's, it's a nice big print. Really pretty. You could use this. All of these prints we're showing can make it reversible too because yeah. you could turn it over and highlight that really pretty print. Okay, and then we also have our Christmas legend kit. And you have an open piece. I do. That one. 139 for Christmas legend. You get that really pretty plaid, that Christmas plaid. So Laura said thank you so much, Nancy and Michelle. You're welcome. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll have more tips tomorrow. And Diane says beautiful large flowers. Now this one is pretty because you can do it in a wider one. So see how... See how this one is a wider runner here? That's how this is going to turn out, and it's going to be spectacular. So if you like this one, it would be really cute. So this one is sold one thirty nine, and then I think Feeling Frosty is my last Christmas one I have. Mm -hmm. So Feeling Frosty is one forty. Is that right? 140 uh -huh. for feeling frosty. And I have that fabric here. And Janet said this demo is fantastic. Thank you, Janet. Let me see where. Oh, here it is. Now, this one's really cute. And tomorrow I'll show you guys how I would cut this one. Because this one is interesting because it has multiple borders going on. So this is feeling frosty, and you could do some really cute stuff with this one. Oh, that one's going to be so So tomorrow fun. I'll talk so. you through how I would do this one. And then if you need a border or a backing, this is from feeling frosty. It's the ornaments, the little green ornaments. Sold $1.41. And Barbara wanted to know what the backing was for Christmas Legend. Christmas legend. I thought that was the big ornaments. Let me see. I don't, I think we didn't what have it with called? it. I'll, I'll have to, it, I would look that one up. Yeah. Okay. Cause it wasn't in my tub. I'll look it up. She's going to look it up right now. I'll see if it was over here. Oh, here it is, mom. Okay. So Christmas legends. Are you, can you go back to the main page? Yeah. Okay. Let's see how much we have of this one. Well, we have a lot. Oh, okay, good. Okay, here's this Christmas Legends. <gasps> Look at that one. So winner, pretty. winner. So it has the poinsettias and all of the ornaments hidden in there. So this is a half yard cut, sold 142. And buy in increments. Buy in increments. You'll need up to a yard and a half to, if you're doing the extra large one, you need two yards. Um, unless you don't mind sewing your, your pieces together. Now I have another one for Christmas Legends if you want a little bit deeper of a look. These this are those. This is for Barbara. This is for Barbara. Oh, and anyone who got Christmas Legend. Yeah. Um, these are the old fashioned ornaments. Really pretty. Sold 143. Uh huh. 143. Super cute. So either of those would work. So let me put a comment in. They need one, 
to one and a half yards backing. And if you're doing the super large, my big super large wine, I would recommend two yards unless you don't mind piecing it. If it is a directional print, I would do two yards just to be safe. All right, so I have a few more kits. I'll try to go as fast as I can, Mom. Yeah, this is the lightning round. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> All right, party time, which I will show you guys tomorrow how yeah, I cut this one. Side. Here's the sample, mm -hmm. party time. This one is sold 144 for the kit, and you get that really cute confetti as your binding. So this is party time, sold 144. So tomorrow I'll walk through that one for you guys. And then I have two backs for this one. One is the cute little presents on white with the party hats and the balloons. This is sold 145 for the half mm -hmm. yard. So make sure you get two to three increments of this and we'll cut that continuous for you. Mm -hmm. And then the other back, which is the one we use, is the balloons. So you can see how we put the balloons on the back. And that is sold 146. I like the balloons. The balloons are really fun and colorful. Super cute. All right, now for my sewing lovers, we have the brand new Love You Sew Kit. Oh, and we have a sample of that mm -hmm. one. You and you get the cute, point? I got it, Mom. You okay. get the cute little buttons. Okay. So here's the runner I did. And you can see, remember how I told you guys about offsetting? This one, I offsetted those little um, scissors because they matched up identically, but I thought it was kind of cute just to offset it. So here's the kit for that. It sold 147. And then if you need the backing, 148 is those cute little old fashioned sewing machines. Featherweight sewing machines, cute. Featherweight mm -hmm. sewing machine. Super cute. Now we have some really cute ones from Lavender Market. This one is sold 149. Uh -huh. And then you get the little honeycomb with the bees. And I'll show you what that border print looks like. This would be a fun one to put the lavender in the middle. So I, let me put it up right side up. This one, <laughs> <laughs> this one, I would put this in the middle and these on your borders. And then the white would be the middle, which I think would be super cute. So if you are a lavender or a honeybee lover or a daisy lover, this is a really cute one for you. And that one is sold 149. 149. And then we have two really cute backgrounds for this one. So here's the cute little um, beehives and the garden stuff and the little Such mason glasses, yeah. uh, mason jars. 150 is this one. Mm -hmm. Sold 150. And then if you just want some lavender on the back instead, because uh, my lavender lovers, I know how much you all love lavender. My aunt used to love lavender. Um, this one sold 151. Oh, and it looks like we just have a little bit left of that one, Mom, so I will take that one down. Okay. Now, for my retro oh. lovers, we have our diners. Let me open this up. And this would be a really fun one for my diner lovers or my old-fashioned car lovers. This Barbara is... just got her box. Oh, good! Hi. This one is sold 152. 152 and it comes with that really fun red binding the red marbly looking um, binding and then if you need a fun background we have the scenes and then we have the cars so how cute would this be in your kitchen so this one is sold 153, 153 mm -hmm. for all the little scenes and the cherry pie and then the other one is the signs, the old retro signs with the cars. And that is sold 154. All right, I got a few more guys. Now, if you're ready to check out, you're welcome to check out. You can just go to your shopping cart and then if there was something you didn't want, you can just take that out. Um, and then you just want to check out within four hours from when we started. Otherwise, the items will start disappearing from your cart and go to the next person. 
if you're watching on the replay, if you're watching on the replay, you can continue to buy. You can continue to buy. <laughs> All right, Autumn Splendor. Let me open this one up. I think I'll take this one out and open it. Look at this one, you guys. Now, this again would be one of those wider prints. Um, you can you can still get it pretty large because this one I think has three, what's it, one, two, three, four repeats on this. So you could still make it the super long one like I did. Um, but this would be cute with the apples around the edges and then your this being the center. So so Vicky this. said, has the date been changed for the sew along? So I think I might have to make a new activity for tomorrow. Oh, for tomorrow? Because I put the information in today's. Oh, okay. So Vicky, yes, I'll, I'll make a new event for tomorrow that we'll go live in. Okay, perfect. All right, and then here's the background for the Autumn Splendor. Look at that one, you guys. With my butterflies. And Helen said so many great and easy projects for Christmas gifts. Yes. You can make so. a ton of these for all your friends and relatives. And they're so easy because now that you know the tricks, and Mom will teach you the sewing tricks tomorrow, um, you're going to be on your way just sewing away. All right. So I got one more for fall here. This is Cavalier Crows. Look at this one, you guys, with those sunflowers. I think those are sunflowers, not daisies, right? Yes, sunflowers. sunflowers. Uh -huh. So Cavalier Crows is sold one fifty-seven. Yes, and Vicky, yes, we will go live on our Facebook page. You should type the word L I V E. It'll link up a message for you. Then. That's your binding. So cute. And Dinah said that's her plan for gifts. Good. <laughs> They're gonna be great gifts. Okay, and then Halloween. We still have some Halloween kits in our Nomies. This one is sold, um, what number is this one sold? 158, and I have this one, So, or we sewed this one up. We haven't put our back on it yet, but look at how cute this one turned out. And Carla just joined in. She said, will I be able to watch the replay later? Yes, so as soon as, we're almost done, so as soon as we end, it will be immediately up on Facebook, so you can re-watch the whole video, and it will never go away. It will be there forever. Um, it will be on the app in about an hour or two, and then you'll be able to watch it on the app or our webpage for the next 30 days. The next 30 days. All right, so let me move this. And then I do have the gnome fabric for the back. So if you need a back for that gnome one, look at how cute this one is. With all the tossed gnomes and pumpkins and the cute little gnome cat. He's a cutie. So it probably won't be there in time for Halloween unless you live really close to us. Um, but, <laughs> but it's still we'll super it. cute. Yep. And then I have just a couple left. Because we have kits for everybody. Okay, so we did the strawberries already. Now, if you got the strawberry runner, I think we still have some of the strawberry fabric for the back. A little bit. Just a little bit. So this is the strawberries that we use on the back. It's the little baby strawberries. So if you need that, it is sold $160. And Judy said, thank you so much. This has been awesome. Woohoo! I'm glad. I'm glad. And if you have any more questions, just you can put them in the comments or come back tomorrow for our live and we'll answer any more questions that you have. Uh -huh. Now, this is Avalon. Um, I didn't get to this one today. I'll show you guys tomorrow how I'm going to cut this one. Okay. We'll just do a quick cutting in the beginning, Mom, or yeah. would we do it after you're done sewing? No, we'll do it in the beginning. Okay, let me show you this, because this is a wider print. So see that wider print? So it's going to make a nice, chunky runner for you. So you had Party Time, The Gnomes, and Avalon. Avalon, and I thought there was one more for tomorrow. Mm. We'll find out. Figure it out. Okay, now Avalon. So Lori said you entertained and educated. Oh, I'm glad. Oh, and I have to show them how to do my bow. Will we do that tomorrow? <laughs> Tomorrow's bows. Uh, bow I'll might be a separate. <laughs> <laughs> bows are going to be tomorrow. I'll take a second. I'll do. I'll put one on Mom as we start the show. <laughs> All right. So here's the dark flowers sold to. Um, what's the number of on this one? The one sixty-two. One sixty-two uh -huh. for Avalon. One sixty-two. 
So pretty. Now there's more in Avalon. So if you got Avalon, just type the word Avalon in the search bar and we have more that are super cute. I just only had one in my bin. All right, here's another great one for spring called Floral Fantasy. Now I think we only have a few of these left. Oh, do I need to scan that again, Mom? <laughs> no. I think I need to scan it. Okay, scan it. Okay, now it's up. Yep. Sold 163. It's Floral Fantasy. Floral Fantasy. Let me show you guys this one. There's only a few. There's of those. just a few, and I can see why. Look at how gorgeous that one is. Yes. So Helen said she had been putting off making a runner so long because she was afraid to cut uh -huh. the fabric. So now she's ready. Oh, good. Go. Yay. Yay. Okay. And then I have this one, and then I can't find the sunflower one. I got to find this one. Okay. This is Folk Garden. I got two left. This one and my sunflowers. So Folk Garden, look at this one, you guys. I'll show you that print. So fun. Wonderful for spring. Perfect for spring. And this one has um, multiple repeats, so you can make it small or big, which is fun. And then we have two backs for it. One is the yellow, and then one is the gray. So here's the yellow, which would be such a fun background for you guys. And this one is sold 165. 165. We can always show the other one tomorrow. The sunflower can. one? Yeah. Well, let me try because today is the day that they can add to their box. Tomorrow oh, we okay. can't. Do you know where it is? Yeah, it should be here. And then okay. here's the other one. This is the one with the scenes with the little trees and the bees and stuff. This is sold 166. D6. I have the background color. Let me find my sunflowers. Oh, here it is. Okay, my last one is our sunflowers. So Jane said, in addition to the kit, we need to order one and a half yards of backing. Yes, yes. one to one and a half. If you want to be safe, get a yard and a half, but you should be okay with a yard um, if, you a, seam it. if you seam it. Now, if you don't like seaming it, get a yard and a half. Now this is my sunflower fields, which is How up right pretty. now. Sold 167. 167. And this again is gonna make the wider runner because it has that bigger border. And then our final thing will be this. And didn't do you want to put the pattern back up, Mom? Do you think? No, I we'll put this back. Okay. Up. All right. Now if you need a back for sunflower fields, look at this one, you guys. Sold 168. 168 and those little birds are so cute mm -hmm. really cute all right that's all my kids <laughs> i got through all of them now Yay. if you needed that fusible fleece again we're selling them in one yard increments so um if you need two yards three yards just put the number of increments you need we'll cut it as a big piece for you this one is sold 118 118 for your fleece And is there anything else you wanted to put up, Mom? Um, nope, that's it. Okay, and then the pattern was 100, and the two rulers, the 8-inch was 101, and the 12-inch was 102. Mm -hmm. So those are all the items that you're going to need to make this super fun runner. Um, and Join us tomorrow. You can join us tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll be back at 2 p.m. Central. Mom's going to be showing you her all her sewing tricks and how to put these guys together. I'll have a couple more um, cutting techniques for some of the runners to show you guys how to cut those. And then you're going to be off to sewing because you know all the stuff now. <laughs> so, um, again, join us tomorrow. Now, remember, today is the last day you can add to your Sunday Monday box. So add in anything else you want. If you get charged extra shipping, we will credit that back to your account. But you need to check out before today. Otherwise, it's going to go into the next Thursday, Friday box. So check out today. Otherwise, it will ship with our Thursday, Friday box out by Monday for you guys. And so. they want to know to review the kits. They can watch the replay. You can watch this whole replay. We also have another video from um, a couple weeks ago, right? That's called Easy Stripe Table Runner. I think you wrote in the title. Mm -hmm. And that goes through all the kits as well. Um, or you can just type the word Easy Stripe in your search bar and it will bring up everything on the Easy Stripe kits. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? Are we good? I think we're great.
All right, right, and I'll teach you my bow tomorrow. So we'll do that tomorrow, sewing tomorrow, and more fun tips. So from Nancy and Michelle. Um, and Erica. And Erica. We hope you have a great evening. I hope we inspired you to get working on your kits to get cutting. And then come back tomorrow, 2 p.m. Central, and we're going to start sewing. All right, bye, everyone.